The clip you are about to watch is an unedited interview by ITV with Bill Maloney at the 2010 UK rally against child abuse. This interview was not broadcast by ITV. If you are a supporter of Pie and Mesh Films, we would ask you to help us to continue with our fights against child abuse and for you and your family's civil liberties by donating whatever you can afford or by purchasing our films from our website to enable us to continue giving you the hard-hitting facts. God bless all victims and survivors. Rolling. So this is Londoners, London tonight. Yeah. It's not national, but... No, I understand London tonight, yeah. Okay, here we go, guys. Already, sorry, just stand back there. Yeah. Just, what's your full name and what you do, please, just for the tape? Okay, my name, my name's Bill Maloney, and um, I am a victim of institutional child abuse, as were my other seven siblings, and my mother and my father, who were Irish immigrants who came over to this country in the 50s. Um, and I have fortunately been able to pull up and become not just a victim but a, a survivor and um, I became a filmmaker um, I was making dramatic films and then um, I made a film a documentary called Sun, Sea and Satan exposing fresh evidence on the island of Jersey especially in a place, uh, a mental institution just one minute's drive from Hope de la Garenne, a 600 bed mental institution that has never been investigated where children were told at yeah, Hope de la Garenne if they didn't shut up about their child abuse allegations they would be sent up to the nut house. Um, I made that film and two, three weeks after that film was um, sent to all the major broadcasting companies um, including your own ITV. Uh, my sister was found dead in her apartment and cause of death unascertained, even though the coroner's assistant told us we could dispose of her body um, because the liver was okay and it would tell everything about um, how she died in toxicology. When we actually got in to the, um, to, to the inquest, the coroner tried to get me to take part in a secret meeting, meeting with her and the police, uh, to which I refused. I said my evidence would be given in open court. And there was also on that day a major article in the Irish world about um, um, Sun Sin Satan and my sister's case. And I haven't, to my, again, cause of death unascertained. We weren't allowed to question witnesses in a, in a proper manner. The coroner was very aggressive towards us, and we have heard since, even though we have new evidence and have declared we have new evidence, we have heard nothing from the coroner or from um, the police. So I now have turned my filmmaking skills into um, fighting for all the abuse victims out there and um, you know I, I don't want people to think that all us abuse victims we are sort of um, sitting in corners drinking bottles of whiskey at night in dark corners but um, I have been there as of most victims but now I'm not sitting in the dark corner anymore and I'm not drinking the whiskey anymore but I am still fighting for my brothers and sisters who are sitting in the corners so I would like to say to you all you We've got someone punching for you out here. Yeah. It's horrendous, but how, how do you manage to do this? How are you doing this? How are you managing to be so public? How are you? Is this just? Is this your way of fighting it? Do you think? Well, I, I think it's, um, it, it's, it has become my way of fighting it because um, we've had the lawyers, we've had the social workers, we've had the politicians, we've had the crown, and they all said they're going to make it better, and they've been fighting it with their methods for years and years and years, many many years, and we haven't even got. Paedophilia is part of the national curriculum. Now, if you send children out into the world and they are unarmed against paedophiles, now, arming them means educating them. How, how paedophiles would try to school them, whether it's on the in internet or whether it's on the street. Now, we want that taught as part of the national curriculum and then the government, this government, this new government, will show us that they are making a strong, concerted effort to help. Now, Pie and Mesh Films, we have um, invited over 600 members of parliament to this rally today, and we have not had one email back from any of them. Every single member of parliament has been invited to this child abuse rally. Now, what, what frightens me even more is that 99.9% .9 of all children taken into care and young offenders institutions are from lower class backgrounds. I'm not going to say working class anymore, because everyone 
everyone says we're all working class if we go to work. So lower class backgrounds, that is who I am punching for. That is who I am fighting for. And um, especially the girls as well. You know, my sister Diana, who was found dead in her apartment, and we still have no no, no um, outcome of that. You know, death, cause of death, unascertained. She was a freedom fighter. She was at Greenham Common, and um, she was part of a large movement. And I believe that that was certain people saying to me, you know, if you keep messing with us, we're going to take yours. And they might have taken one, they might have taken my sister, and they might take more of us. But we will continue to fight this, and we, we are coming forward now. And we want to talk to the top people. That's what we want to talk to. And um, there has been a headline. Uh, people are talking about me committing treason here today. And treason means, if you say anything derogatory against the Crown, that is treason. And it was only up to 1998 that that carried the death penalty. But it doesn't carry the death penalty anymore. But if you speak bad against the Crown, that you can still get life imprisonment. So today, as far as the law's concerned, Bill Maloney is going to commit treason. I hope you're here to see it. What is the main focus of this rally then? Is it about just voicing uncomfortable stories and stuff that people find difficult to hear in such a public arena? Why, why are you here today? What's the rally well, the, the main... The, the main, the main focus, uh, the main focus of, the, of this rally today is that people, we have left it in the hands of the professionals and they are doing absolutely nothing, nothing. We found um, a young boy, Adam Rickwood. Um, I made a film called Adam Rickwood and the Maddensley Heroes. Now Adam Rickwood was a, a young kid who four years ago, he, um, he allegedly committed suicide in a place called Hassockfield, which was originally called Medemsley, which was a young offender's institution. Now, Adam Rickwood comes from a poverty-stricken background, and um, he was put into this, um, this uh, young offender's institution, even though all charges against him had been dropped. He was then assaulted, as we say, he was restrained, if you like, by guards. They used nose distraction and a double-seated embrace. Nose distraction is a blow to the nose, straight up to the nose, and is designed for pain. Um, Adam Rickwood, he was um, on suicide watch as well. After this assault, he was put into a cell and allegedly was found hanging by his own laces, bearing in mind if you're on suicide watch, they will take your laces off of you, your belt, etc., so you don't hang yourself. But they never done this to Adam. Even though Adam was getting the company Serco, private company Serco, um, £175,000 a year for just being in that young trainer's institution. Um, and the, the, the injuries that were found on him when he was found hanging was a broken nose and a broken wrist. And when they got to the first inquest, they went to the guards and they said, how did these horrific injuries happen? The guard said, we are awfully sorry, they are restraining techniques. So then after this outrageous, unlawful assault, the kid has gone and hung himself while on suicide watch with his own laces. Doesn't make sense to us. So now we have a second inquest. And the, the second coroner, whose name is Friedman, because the first coroner didn't conduct the inquest correctly. So now Mr. Friedman, the second coroner, has been threatening Cayenne Mash Films, my company, that we should take down all reports, um, whether it's the trailer, whether it's the film, about Adam Rickwood and the Medemsley Heroes. And we have offered to re-edit the film, but he's not taking part in that. So the guy is like, you know, started to threaten us. He, first it was a, an invitation to take it down, now it's a request, and next it will probably be a D-notice. In that trailer, are they actors you've used, or have you done secret filming? No, I've, I've been filmed, i filmed Adam Rickwood's whole family. And what the coroner is peeved about, we have eight members in that trailer of Adam Rickwood's families and I asked them the quest, straight question, do you believe that Adam killed himself? And every single one of them says no. That is what the coroner said is going to prejudice his case. Even though all the information within this film is already in the public domain. Now, Friedman is, as a coroner, is supposed to be independent, as was the coroner at my sister's inquest. Now, my, the, the coroner at my sister's inquest cleared the courtroom at one point and spoke to the police on their own in the court. Then she called me in and asked me to speak in front of the police. And I said, no, you are supposed to be independent. You've just allowed the police to talk on their own to you with no one else present. And I just wish you to show me the same courtesy that you've shown them. Get rid of the police, madam, and I will tell you everything, or it will be in an open court.
Now, I am really seriously concerned about our democracy and the way it is going. Last year, the Justice Secretary, Jack Straw, it pushed through a law that has now made it illegal for any child that is being abused in any institutions, it is illegal for that child to put it into the public domain. We also have foster care in homes. Now foster carers, um, we've got private fostering homes where they will give you a child and, and how they advertise it. it is, how they advertise it is, have you got a spare room? If you've got a spare room, why not foster a child? So, um, what's happening up there? It's fucking me, it's putting me off. Oh, sorry, hang on a second, mate. Hey, chaps, do two minutes, okay? <laughs> for the whole thing, all right? So... Where was we? Where was we? Anyone got that? Basically, your fight is against institutionalised child abuse. I am, I, am only in, I am only interested, me personally, I am only interested in my fight against institutional child abuse. And the story of Holly Gray, you've only got to, you've only got to look at the story of Holly Gray and uh, start to understand exactly what is happening in this country. And this country is going to make its people so ashamed of our treatment against kids in care and young offenders. Now there's a lot of young offenders, you know, oh, so what, they're young offenders, they deserve it. Bring back the birch. We are actually getting people to say, bring back the birch. Now, that is out of date, antiquated. There, there is no cure for paedophilia. There is no cure for paedophilia. It doesn't matter, oh, we can, we, we're gonna bring them in and we're gonna try and we're gonna try and counsel them. We'll get the, well, that's fine. If you wanna try and cure the paedophiles, take them away and cure them. But don't bring them back to us until you know that they are cured. Because this planet is being ruined, ruined by these people because it affects the whole structure of the planet. Now, the future keepers of this planet are the children. And if we are abusing them psychologically, sexually, physically, in every manner that we know what, that, we, that we can think of, and even involving them in sadomasochistic torture, what is going to happen to this planet? The children are the future. And as I say again, I am an abuse victim. And every form of abuse that was available, I got it. But I'm strong now. And I'm fighting for these people. And I will spend the rest of my life fighting for this until we stop it. And if we can stop it, let's, let's put our own house in order. And we put our own in house, house in order, then we can stop it. But nobody wants to talk about paedophilia in this country, especially the judges, Tony Blair's, etc. And I was ejected from um, David Dimbleby's question time after the first leaders debate, as David Dimbleby told all us in the audience, a moment of history. And it was a moment of history. And I wanted to ask, what are the politicians that were there, Gove was one of them, what are you guys going to do about institutional paedophile rings that are operating in this country now? That's, that was the question that got me ejected from question time. One week later, it was never reported on, it was never put into the, the public domain, what happened that night between myself, Dimbleby and the people that he had on his panel. Two weeks later, I got Nick Clegg on Blackheath. I asked him exactly the same question, and he said to me, I don't understand what you mean by institutional paedophile rings. What are we going to do? What, what, can, what can you do? So now, as I said before, we don't trust the lawyers, the barristers, the members of parliament, the crown, so we are shouting now. And it's time for all us victims to come forward, show ourselves and shout. And what is happening to Holly Grade at this moment in time is absolutely outrageous. And you can see what it's doing to me. Okay, that's brilliant. Will that do us? Yeah. <laughs> Give me that one. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well done, Bill. Well done, Bill. I'm not going to be